The financial system in Europe is mostly composed of banks. Most of the credit to households and firms is through banks rather than market. This is why banks matter. There are many issues in the banking sector in Europe uh, in particular because we are just coming out of a long crisis. In the euro area in particular we had two recessions rather than just one recession and when the economy is stagnant then uh, of course banks suffer. Why do they suffer? Because a lot of their firms or the household they, they lend money to they don't have uh, you know, the money to repay their loans. And uh, these are what we call the non-performing loans. And uh, when the balance sheet of banks uh, are burdened by non-performing loans, uh, uh, of course, that means that profitability is low. And when profitability is low, this eventually has an effect also on the capitalization of banks. And eventually, this has an effect on their ability to lend money to the real economy. I spoke about the resolution, the bank resolution framework that we uh, have put together, uh, we have designed in Europe. Uh, what is a bank resolution framework? It is the set of rules uh, that uh, uh, we put in place uh, in case of uh, a bank uh, uh, which is insolvent uh, or has problems so that it has to be either closed down or recapitalized. And uh, I want to argue that uh, there are two flaws in this, uh, uh, in this framework. One is that uh, we look at the resolutions uh, institution by institution rather than looking uh, uh, at the systemic uh, uh, importance uh, of uh, various banking cases. I'm talking about the connection and the possible spillovers between one bank crisis of a particular institution to the rest of the system. A lot of uh, problems very often uh, have to do with the system and uh, you know, you know, spillovers and contagion or rather than one single case. The other issue I think is important is the fact that in the new rules it's very difficult to use public money in order to, um, in order to intervene in recapitalization of banks. Now, this second issue, uh, you know, people have a lot of sympathy with that and it's quite understandable because a lot of taxpayers' money were used after the crisis in order to save banks. And I think this is obviously wrong, so we want to limit that. But at the same time, we do not want to prevent altogether the ability of the public sector to intervene when the crisis is systemic, because this at the end will eventually cost less to taxpayers than no intervention at all. The solution, uh, in, in my view, is to get a systemic approach to a banking crisis, not look at a, at, at a crisis uh, uh, banks by banks, institution by institution, but try to assess the connection between the crisis of one institution and the rest of the solidity, the fragility of the rest of the system. So we want to have an approach which is one hand is preventive, try to avoid a crisis, intervene in time and uh, at the same time uh, comprehensive so that look at uh, you know what is the cause of the problem and try to address uh, the causes of this problem. <laughs>